Hello everyone, this is Clayton G. Today we're going to be covering Volts. Um, if you're not familiar with what Volts is, it is a mod pack for Minecraft. Um, and we're going to be covering the Volts version that is based on Minecraft 1.5.2. Now I'm going to go ahead and apologize beforehand if you hear a little bit of noise in the background. That, that would be my 10 month old and it's really hard to control a 10 month old. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be covering fulmination generators, which if you've played vaults before, you're probably familiar with. Now, the design you are familiar with is probably this one. Square, cube, pretty damn standard. Uh, now, we're going to explore the basic design real quick and how it works. Fulmination generators, how they work is there's an exp uh, you set off an explosion, and the fulminations absorb the explosion and turn it into energy. This is how the standard design looks. Large cavern, you put antimatter down in here, or the explosive of your choice, um, antimatter vials, not the actual bombs themselves. If you put the bombs down in here, well, you're gonna have a bad day. The resulting explosion is then absorbed by the walls and outputted to your, uh, to your energy distribution of choice. Let's go ahead and patch this hole real quick. Now, as you've probably noticed, I've got 10 ultimate energy cubes set up here. They are all empty. Um, we're going to be testing the effectiveness of the basic design as compared to the design I have created over here. Now this design is based off of uh, notes given to me by a good friend of mine, Lord Archon. Check out his YouTube channel if you feel like it. Um, but we'll go over the uh, physics of it and numbers and everything else here in a moment. But Let's go ahead and test it out, shall we? Shoot the anima antimatter in there. I'm using one gram, by the way. And let's just watch the batteries. Now, if I remember correctly, these should cap out at eh, about 10.5 apiece. Uh, and since we have 10 of these, we'll just multiply them by 10, and that's the uh, output of the generator itself. Ten point six five. That's a little bit higher than usual, but um, serves the purpose. That would be one hundred and six point five, one hundred six point five megajoules for the basic design. Now we're going to go over here and test this design that I've built. This one, you know, this doesn't actually have a huge central chamber. It's just a, you know, it, eh, it's a checkerboard. Test fire it real quick. One gram antimatter, and watch the battery. If I remember correctly, um, this one's actually pretty dang consistent in its output. It should be 34.35. Which means with this design, we're getting 343.5 megajoules as opposed to 106.5. Now there are reasons for this, which I am about to cover, but let's just go over efficiency numbers real quick. The standard design uses 225 fulmination generators. That's quite a lot. Uh, from 225 to this design, which takes 169. That's a 56 fulmination generator difference. These things are actually kind of expensive and I'd rather use as little as possible. So, let's break down the uh, numbers real quick. So this one outputs 106.5, we'll divide that by 225, and we end up with uh, about half a megajoule per fulmination generator. Well this one over here is 169, so we'll take the 343.5 megajoules, divide it by 169, and you get about 2 megajoules per fulmination generator. So essentially this one is 4 times more efficient than the standard design. Now I want to tell you why this is real quick before we actually get into the building. Uh, I will put a link down in the description to where you can just go ahead and skip forward to the building of it if you want. Here is a single fulmination generator. Fulmination generators, as I've said before, absorb an explosion and output as energy. However, something a lot of people don't, uh, don't notice is that they output energy to each four sides. So, the standard, uh, the standard fulmination gen only captures one side of the explosion. 
if you notice, the checkerboard pattern over here actually captures all, uh, four of the sides. You know, it misses two, but, well, we have to actually put cabling on it. So you are at effectively getting four times the output. Now, I know I'm probably boring you with numbers, so um, without further wait, let's go ahead and move on to the building of this reactor. Alright, so let's get started building this dang thing. You're going to start out with a 7x7 grid of universal cable, or the cabling of your choice, uh, depending on what version of Volts you're running. And you are going to put two universal cable right there. Uh, I'll explain here in a little bit as to why, but uh, we will make a checkerboard pattern from these fulmination gems, if I can, you know, make it respectable and not fuck up. I will fast forward this so you guys don't actually have to watch me do this the entire way. Alright, now that we're to this point, there's going to be a change in the build structure. Uh, we will put a fulmination down in the dead center. Surrounded by a first date or cross looking pattern, depending on how you want to call it. And we'll continue the check checkerboard. I'll explain why we're doing this here in just a little while. Okay, now we've got that cabled up, we're going to start on the next layer. I want to stop right here and note that we're not actually going to fill in this entire cross. We're going to leave a gap in the middle. That is for our antimatter explosion. We're going to continue this pattern up three more times. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Something to note as as before, before we actually seal this off, we're going to put a dispenser facing down, and then we're going to put a water bucket right here. The reason being is that's where our antimatter explosions explosions actually going to happen. Dispenser will drop antimatter in, antimatter make explosion, fulmination generators absorb explosion, explosion give us energy. Energy, good. Now we've got our checkerboard pattern finished. Um, we will go around the sides and finish cabling it up. Take a look at that. Okay, all the cabling is done on the outside. Let's go ahead and finish over the top. Alright, take a look around. Missed a couple spots. Double check. Okay, looks like that's pretty much finished. I'm going to grab a redstone lamp because I forgot to grab one. Grab one, not toss one. Redstone lamp, antimatter. I have Optifine fault installed if you're wondering what's causing my little graphical glitches there. And a button. Now with said button, I'm going to take a little bit of universal cable and some cubes. And we're going to see how consistent this design really is. Preload the dispenser. Put a lamp on top. 
crotch button, and a little bit of cable. One, two. And let's make a test fire. This shouldn't end up at 34.35. There we go. Consistent, reliable, more efficient power. And it seems as the sun is setting, I am going to say my goodbye. Should you have any questions, please ask them in the um, comment section below, and I will do my best to answer them as quickly and efficiently as possible. Uh, thank you for watching, and have a, have a good one.